Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at SNW Gallery in beautiful Manhattan, Kansas. We are delighted to have gallery artist Callie Crawlman and guest artist Beverly Dodge Radefeld, who are great friends, I understand. Great friends, and they are here with their traveling show. Um, it's been to how many places is it, is it going? Two places, and we've got two more lined up. Ah, uh -huh. so we're number stop three of five. Um, exciting to have this here, and they're going to talk. I'm going to stop, and they're going to talk about this wonderful show. So I'm going to turn it over to Callie, and please ask questions if you have any. All right. Thank you, Alan, uh, and thanks, Kevin. He's at the other end of the gallery, and. Uh, as Alan mentioned, I'm with my friend uh, and fellow artist, Beverly Dodge Radefeld. And my name is Callie Crawlman. I live in Topeka. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the show and a little about, about my career as well. So I'll start out. Um, I'm a Washburn University graduate. And uh, I have a degree in fine arts. And I've been a professional fine artist for about 25 years. I show all over the Midwest as well as doing some national and international uh, venues as well. So uh, Bev and I, we show at several galleries together. And uh, in our adventures, hauling stuff here and there, uh, we came up with this idea, well, what, what if we painted our own styles, which are very, very different, uh, of the same scene and so in our conversation we just decided let's give this a try and um, actually this piece behind me uh, broom weed and Leavenworth Arango was one of the first pieces that uh, we kind of shared the same scene we were near Cottonwood Falls uh, for a paint out there and just happened to come across that scene and so my interpretation of that is here. And Beverly's got such a wonderful loose style. And so it's been a good, uh, like, uh, battle of the wits to figure out, you know, how each one of us is going to do our own style. Um, I'm going to let Beverly introduce herself a little bit, and then we're going to go around and talk about some of the individual paintings. So I'll hand it over to Beverly, and she'll uh, fill you in on her information. Hi, I'm Beverly. Uh, my history is a lot longer than Callie's. Um, I, I also have a, a fine arts degree from Washburn University from a long time ago and uh, had some great um, instructors there, professors. Um, and when I was in college, my was pretty hard edged. That was back in the 60s. And um, for me to come this far has been um, a, quite a bit of a change. Uh, Ed Navone would probably wonder where I've come from here. I worked at, um, many, after college, I worked at Miniger Foundation as an activities therapist and um, then moved on to uh, family business and had kids and was doing soft sculpture. Uh, we, uh, um, the soft sculptures have shown all over the world and um, I um, still am making them, but again, the arthritis has kind of set in, so we're um, exciting to do that now. It's a, more of a challenge than it was before. Um, Callie's uh, mentioned that our stuff is a whole lot different, and it really is. Callie has uh, specific places that she can tell you exactly where it is that she painted that, I started out with that, and then somewhere along the way, the paint and the canvas kind of decided it was going to do something else. So um, a lot of mine are very hard to uh, describe on exactly where they were, and I a lot of times don't remember, but I can count on Callie to always <laughs> <laughs> back me up on that. Um, a lot of mine show fields and stuff. My family are um, all farmers from um, north of here, up in the Powhatan and um, Fairview area. So uh, when I think about family and the comfort of family, I a lot of times go back to the farm field. So, and I like the way that I can get the distance in my um, paintings with that. So 
that's one of the reoccurring things that you see in mine, mine and color. I love color. So, Kelly, you want to start on the... Uh, we're going to segue over this way a little bit and, uh, and, like I said, just talk about a few of these. As uh, Bev mentioned about her uh, history on the farm, I, too, have the same history. I grew up uh, in northwest Kansas, way northwest. Uh, if anybody has heard of Canarado going um, on the way to Colorado skiing or something or vacationing, uh, our farm was 12 miles north of there, and so I, too, have a special connection, I feel like, with uh, the land and the surroundings. Uh, I kind of laugh because uh, coming from western Kansas to eastern Kansas, uh, there was a huge difference in the topography. And I always uh, joke and say, well, I painted all three trees in western Kansas, so I had to move here to find something else to paint. But I still love it back there, and, and uh, there's nothing like that big open sky. Uh, that's one of the things that I try to focus on a lot of times is the skies in Kansas. Uh, this piece back here, and this is Beverly's piece that goes with it. Um, in fact, this time of year, we see those beautiful ambers and golds. On the way over here, uh, we were commenting uh, how rich the colors were this time of year. So, um, and I, t I sometimes I'll p uh, paint flowers in the front. Sometimes people think that's corny, but I love flowers. I'm a huge um, perennial gardener and love perennials. So uh, I love to put a little bit of focal point in the front to draw you into the scene. And uh, so you can tell we, we tend to have a similar palette on some and then on others totally contrasting. And uh, so I'm going to let Bev talk about these two pieces. Uh, this one of mine right over here uh, is fairly new. I had seen <clears throat> Bev's piece and uh, wanted to try to interpret the same scene. And so um, I'm going to let Bev talk about that a little bit because I love her rich colors here. And so it was a fun challenge to try to um, find something that, that I could speak to in that same scene. So I'll, I'll pass this to Beverly. Okay. We'll talk about the next two. Um, one of the things I love, I had this one first, and then Callie um, went ahead with that same scene on hers. And I love the way she took my rocks and made them flowers and still got that um, that glow of that blue. I, again, colors are really my thing. I have people all the time ask me um, how the trees and everything turn out blue and they're really green. And I, my comment is that I see them that way. And if you don't, I feel sorry for you because they're really pretty that way. <laughs> um, one of the things that, uh, and again, Callie, I love the way she does the fields as compared to mine. Um, I just love the distance that putting the fields in there makes. One of the things I need to mention is that the way Callie and I even um, met was that she had a traveling show that she asked several um, other uh, women artists to, it was a woman's show, and we met that way and um, just seemed to click, and from there it's really exploded. I love traveling with her. I, we owned a small, my husband and I owned a small business together, and, you know, working 40, 50 hours a week. And now that I'm somewhat retired, and <laughs> that's a joke, but somewhat retired, um, and being able to travel with Callie to do this and be inspired to um, do these paintings has been a great new part of my life. Um, now's the time to cuss COVID because that's really cut down <laughs> this world along with everything else. We are doing this. We are doing this. Yes, everybody is, everybody is um, figuring out a way to um, make life go on, and that is good. I think there's a lot of um, creativeness that people are doing that really makes life good. One, so I have a question. Beth? Yes. Speaking of, speaking of creativeness, how has COVID have you been inspired, uninspired, both of you? 
I mean, I ha some of the artists we represent have been very active, and others have been like, yeah, no, just not feeling it. Well, I'm probably not typical, because I'm still working, and um, the place, I'm working in a florist, and with COVID, every, the flowers have been an absolutely um, great inspiration for people, and uh, so we've been really busy. I'm the bookkeeper there, and um, so I've been more busy than I want, but yeah, having the time alone and not the pressures of the world because you just can't. You can't let it bother you. Um, so I'm not as creative as I would like to be, but how about you, Kelly? Well, I would say early on, uh, I was kind of in a gray funk, I would say. and But fortunately, I have lots of other fun things I love to do. I love to cook. I love to sew. And so to me, I got into my sewing and uh, making quilts for my family and uh, so I have a giant pile of quilts at home. So, uh, but it's, it's, I needed some sort of diversion. But then I did start to, um, I'm probably more motivated by deadlines. I'm just that, I'm a very analytical person and very, uh, if, if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to until it's like three days ahead. And uh, so I work better spontaneously like that as opposed to, um, you know, methodically. I, I like deadlines. And so in order to get myself going, I started booking other shows, talking to galleries and people. And so that got me motivated. So throughout the summer, I was uh, pretty busy and... Um, so, in, in fact, we, we ended up selling some of the work from the traveling show, so we had to make new art off of uh, some of our reference material. We haven't really been able to hang out much, but um, we've got tons of uh, photographs that we can share and refer to and, and have the memories that go along with those trips. Probably mostly remember what we ate that time, but, you know, because, yeah. Food and art, they just go together, you know. So anyway, um, after my gray funk, then things got um, tracking again, and, and I felt then I've been very active and have several shows going and coming up. So uh, there's plenty of work coming out now. So it's, it's a positive thing. So I do want to talk about these couple paintings over here because this is a funny story. So I'll... Oh, okay. This one is a great one. Yes. This is a great one, and I want to give everyone a chance to see it. Okay. I want to talk a little about these two because obviously you probably may not see any connection between these. And um, so. I saw this one of Bev's, and uh, it's titled Around the Back. And you can see it's got some little leading road and all this kind of stuff. But then when I reviewed the material that we were using for our reference, I'm like, what the, what the heck? I, I'm not seeing it, you know, because it was a very literal uh, scene with a, a barn and the, the path and the bales. This is the way the photograph is. <laughs> yes. So, so I'm always in awe of how uh, she can interpret something. And I always uh, just see things literally the way they are. And so to interpret these two paintings off of the same reference material, material is kind of crazy. But uh, I think it works and it's, it's, it's always a fun experience to see how somebody else sees the world. And um, I think we both enjoy each other's work, and so we can bounce ideas off of each other, et cetera. So, um, I'd like to talk about the water over here. I will say when we saw it, we, we, we looked at these, we had the pairing and we went, 
Okay. <laughs> but we listen. We listen to you. We listen to you and said. <laughs> It's, it's always a challenge to always put them together. Um, one of the things I uh, talk about the, on these two paintings, this is a good example of people say, where do those colors come from with my work? But um, I really like it. I like the depth, and I love it, um, the way it comes across. And I love the calmness of Callie's work. Uh, mine seemed to have a little more uh, friction in it, but... I always feel calm, calm with Callie's. I have one of her paintings. When we were on a trip, she was doing um, uh, research work for Santa Fe Trails. And uh, we went into this little valley that was uh, uh, with trees, and it was real quiet. It was by a river. And I, it was such a calming feel, and she painted that, and I ended up with it. And I, every time I look at it, you can look at her work and you can feel what she's painted and feel the area that she's in. Um, the other thing, comment is on her water. Um, she has the most terrific water that I've ever seen. This is my only um, try at water, and believe me, I have a long ways to go, but I've never seen anybody do water as good as she does. And it's... Um, Either it's, you know, out in a field, this one's more of a river, um, but man, if it's a stream or if it's whatever, I just, I love her waters. One thing that I have is, that's my go-to saying is when, uh, when I'm out traveling about and Bev's heard it a million times is, uh, we'll be driving along and I'll just slam the brakes on and say, oh my gosh, there's the money shot. And so, uh, so lots of times we'll be driving along and, and I do this by myself with Bev, with my boyfriend, with, you know, whoever I'm painting with, uh, it, uh, when I see it, it immediately screams painting to me. And, uh, this particular was, uh, this particular piece, both of these actually were from the Smoky Hill river on our way back from Wichita delivering paintings one day. And, and uh, I love rivers. Uh, we don't have a lot of those out in western Kansas, so I'm always drawn to them here in eastern Kansas and uh, the reflections on the water. And, and so I'm always drawn to water. And uh, so this one was uh, particularly a lot of fun to do. And, uh, and I like how Bev's turned out. Uh, we, just, we just see things so differently but yet similar. And um, so do you want to... No, I think we're fine. Um, just can't say how much I've enjoyed um, the n new life experience of being able to paint more and um, actually having it come out. We're going to go over to this. Um, this is one of the things my husband and I laugh about is he likes to take pictures uh, really close and I like to take pictures far away and I think Callie's uh, pictures and I uh, these two uh, remind me of my husband and I's idea of how things go with her flowers but I have to see the whole big landscape of the stuff and again the colors okay yeah I, I think this is a, a good uh, um comparison of styles and uh this particular one I don't paint in oils a lot but I'd say maybe 25 percent of the time and that's simply because of the fact I'm usually in a hurry for it to dry I'm usually on a deadline like I said it's not that I dislike the medium or anything but uh I can get it, it tends to be a lot juicier uh, in oil, but I just love the quickness and the immediate response of acrylic. So, um, but I do, I do have them out, both of them all the time, and sometimes I'll let it dry in between and do some uh, other paintings. Now, Bev works in strictly in oils, and uh, so it. Uh, these two particular ones are both oils, and and they, I feel like they have show the rich colors of the prairie. Uh, late summer going into fall 
the golds, the reds of the sumac, etc. So um, I think we might travel on to our last stop. Uh, it's at the front of the gallery. And by the way, I want to thank Alan, Kevin, and their crew for such a beautiful display that they've done and how they've laid everything out and coordinated the pieces. And so, yeah, and how great the gallery looks here at SNW Gallery in downtown Manhattan, Kansas. We love it there. So we're going to travel up front here a little bit if we can and, and uh, let you take a look at these last ones that were just a fun pair to paint. Heck yeah. Okay. You said you had another question? Or was I that about the Would you like the microphone? Um, I'll let you just go. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so my question is, how, how much inspiration do you give to each other? Oh, golly, that's a tough one. We talk to each other often throughout the way, week, uh, just comparing notes and stuff. Uh, I think that uh, probably what I get from Beverly's work is the purity of color, and that's what I've always loved. And so if anything, I try to strive to get more pure colors, particularly that periwinkle that she comes up with that I never have been able to mix. And um, so... I love those pure colors. I don't tend to paint like that, but I love to look at them. And, and so I think just by having someone to spar off of once in a while uh, is, um, you know, keeps you motivated. And particularly when you have a traveling show that you have to replace the paintings for, uh, it, it gives us some time to banter back and forth. So I'll let you comment on that, Bill. Well, and I... My love is the realism that she gets that I would never been able to be able to do. I have to laugh when she works in the acrylics. My life experience with acrylics is doing the hard edge with tape. And um, with the tapes and the, the hard edge from the 60s. So when I, I'm not sure I could get beyond that if I would even try the acrylics. The other thing is that my husband loves Callie's work and it's always the comment, well, okay, it's it's nice, but it, Callie's is, in, then it goes off or there. But we've been married 52 years, so, you know, you just accept whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I love her realism. I love that she's able to tell you exactly where uh, a specific painting is and be able to capture the feel of that. So... And again, I want to say uh, how much we love this gallery. Boy, this is really a nice um, uh, presentation for our work and really good. Thank you. Thank you. So, so do, you have, do you have any comments about these two particular pieces, which I, I just think both of them are absolutely stunning, which okay. is why they're, why they're here as you talk about the money shot yeah, right, right as you walk in the front door. I can tell you exactly where this was. We were on our way back. <laughs> Okay. Bev may not. Red Buds, <laughs> Red Buds were, it was probably in April. Um, it was on our way back. We were uh, headed up uh, from Wichita again. We, we catch a lot of uh, good scenery on the way back from Wichita because we take lots of different routes. And this one was just south of Junction City. I can't remember what the name of that highway is, 187 or something. Anyway, it's south of Junction City. And, and we came up on this. It was a 77? 77? One of them. One of them, yes, yeah. And uh, we came up on these uh, blooming red buds, and I'm like, whoa! Of course, you know, there's always a semi-truck behind you when you're trying to pull off, and you have to find for some little cattle trail to pull off of. And, and so anyway, we, we stopped, and, and just, you know, you want to try to observe. And when Beverly said something uh, to the effect of my work being calm. Uh, the irony of that is I'm a very anxious person. So when I do paint, I think I am trying to achieve that calmness. Plus, 
I'm painting for other people, and so um, cause I can't keep all these at home. So I paint for other people, and I want them to feel calm and happy when they look at it. So, but this was this was a fun trip. We caught some really good uh, scenery on the way back, and and. Uh, No, we we don't always go in a straight line, yeah. So we do have a question. Okay. We do have a question. The question was, do you always paint contrasting landscapes? And I think the answer I think the really Or have the, you done any other subjects? Do you do other subjects? I know that Callie does. I'm not as familiar with your work, Beverly. Um I do a lot of dogs in um I do uh, people will give me pictures of their dogs, so I do a lot of um, hand drawing and watercolor of the dogs. Mostly the landscape are um, what I do with the oils. I'd like to go into more um, abstract. I don't know how much more abstract you can get than what I'm doing, but uh, right now that's interesting, um, an, an interest that I want to go into more, using the color and using that. But... Uh, with Callie's influence, I've mainly stuck with the um, the abstract, and again, that's kind of what uh, my niche has been to showing in galleries and things. So, so if you if you did land if you did more abstract, would they would they still have a landscape bent? Because when when I look at Callie's abstracts and their abstract landscapes, um, I'm, I'm always reminded of uh, William Turner and the burning of London. Somehow that always reminds me of yeah. your work reminds me, at least the ones that I've seen remind me of that. So, uh, you know, are there still going to be a, a, if you go to the abstract route, Beverly, or is it going to still be landscapes or abstracted landscapes or you want to go just all the way there? Yeah, I think I want to go all the way there. And I, the, energy that she has in her um, abstracts, I'm not sure that I could achieve that much because it's more the color the, uh, with mine, more the color, the way it blends, and probably more to a calmer thing. Her abstracts are pretty um, energized. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good one? <laughs> yeah. So I probably wouldn't deviate all that much from... Uh, I really enjoy mixing the color and making them work together. So I probably would stick to that. So do we have any more questions for Beverly or Callie or both of them? We're going to give it a minute because there's always a little bit of a lag with Facebook. In the meantime, I'm going to zoom in on this one. Well, let's see. Sue Godwin said hi. Larry Chopin enjoyed it. Yes. Had a comment that it was wonderful. Wonderful to see the contrasting interpretations. Uh, they love that we invited two artists in such a different style. Um, enjoyed the water. Both were lovely. And I think that wraps it up. Sounds like we're all happy to be here and everyone's lovely. <laughs> you know what? I think on a day like today, that's a good thing. So... Thank you both for being here. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you. And we are going to have these pieces up through, uh, I think, December 23rd. And then they're going to go off to, where are they going to go off to? They'll be going to the Dinas a Cultural, Art, Cultural Arts Center in Russell, Kansas. This is the next one. It's the next one. Okay. I was, I was a little confused on that. I knew it was somewhere out west. Couldn't quite remember. Um, so you can view this entire show. Um, there are a few extra pieces that we didn't quite have room for uh, on our website, snwgallery.com.